Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be previewing the game in college football this, this Saturday. The rivalry in all of sports, in my opinion. The Buckeyes and the Wolverines. And this year, the stakes, once again, are high. 4 versus 10. The Wolverines at the 4 spot. Right there, that last spot in college football. Everybody agreeing that top 4. And that the Wolverines are that final spot. But the, can they maintain that reputation? Can they win the Big 10 East? over the Ohio State Buckeyes. Can they go into a Columbus, a place they have not traveled well to in recent years? The Buckeyes winning 13 of the last 14 matchups between this team, six in a row for the Buckeyes. Last time they were in Columbus, once again, the stakes were high, two versus three, Buckeyes and Wolverines. The Buckeyes came out on top in double overtime with some controversy, but this is 2018. This is a new year. The Buckeyes, they're in a 10 spot. They're in a tough spot to come out of right now. They're on the outside looking in, to say the least, but they, they have some teams ahead of them that with a win over the Wolverines, they can most certainly leapfrog. They've got two loss LSU. They've got the UCF. Golden Knights, and a lot of people are arguing now they're in that ninth spot. They're so poised to go undefeated, to finish this season undefeated. Can this be the, can they actually get into the college football playoff this year? That's the big question on everybody's mind with UCF at nine. I don't think so. I, don't, I think their strength of schedule is going to come back to haunt them. If they can get some opponents on their schedule, I can definitely see them becoming a team that can get into the playoff, but I think they need to get a stronger strength, strength of schedule. Um, as I mentioned, two loss LSU in front of them. There's Washington State with Gardner Minshew. They could get into the playoff, but I, I don't think their strength of schedule could haunt them. I think they play some decent teams. But a couple of teams that definitely for sure will get into the playoff with a Wolverine loss in Ohio State with that help, even though Ohio State would get a 56% chance to make the playoff according to ESPN's Football Power Index. Oklahoma and Georgia, which I think Georgia is going to lose to Alabama. It's not going to be a pretty game for the Bulldogs. It's not going to be a pretty game for the Crimson Tide, but I think Georgia is going down in the SEC title game. I think that Oklahoma is going to lose to either West Virginia or Texas as long as Texas doesn't get upset by Kansas. I don't see that happening, though. But let's get back on track. The Buckeyes and the Wolverines, let's give you some stats to know, individual stats and team stats going into this week's game. Let's start with the number 10 seed, the home underdog, Ohio State Buckeyes, coming in with a 10-1 and record. Let's take a look at quarterback Dwayne Haskins, 3,685 passing yards with 36 touchdowns. Both of those are school records, and he has been a school record setter all year long for the Ohio State Buckeyes. He's been the one consistent player Ohio State can rely on. You put the ball in his hands, he's going to make that key pass. It hasn't been that guaranteed now as it was earlier in the season, but still, you want to put the ball in his hands. Last week, Urban Meyer had him run the ball a lot more, 15 rushes, three rushing touchdowns, and I, I don't know. I think it would work better in the Wolverines' favor if Haskins is indeed carrying the ball more than J.K. Dobbins and Mike Weber. So I think they're gonna. I think the Buckeyes will want to stay with a passing game more with Dwayne Haskins and on the ground, just give the ball to J.K. Dobbins and Mike Weber. Which I don't know why he played last week. I thought about two quarters of of the game through that he's hurt or some disciplinary actions being taken, and we didn't know about it. So, but that. But the McCall kid for the Ohio State Buckeyes, he is very poised, very talented. He can get, he can definitely get some carries in this game, and I would not complain about that. Now let's move on to the running back, J.K. Dobbins, 194 carries this season, so he will most certainly get up to 200 in the game. 915 yards, eight touchdowns for J.K. Dobbins. He has been stellar for the Buckeyes these past couple of seasons. The freshman last year, and with the J.T. Barrett game last year, they were running the football a little more. They weren't as pass happy as they were with this, with a poi, a fantastic young quarter, sophomore quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. Ohio State is going to be good for the next three years as long as he doesn't go to the NFL draft before his senior year, which I don't see it happening. But J.K. Dobbins last year, he was a phenomenal running back this year. Kind of held back with that pass game I just mentioned. 
but both years sharing the backfield with Mike Weber and has proved he's the better running back. Mike Weber is the guy you want in the red zone to punch it in. J.K. Dobbins is where you is the guy you want anywhere else on the field. So Dobbins, I expect him to have a big game this week on Saturday against the Wolverines. Now on to three wide receivers for the Buckeyes, which this wide receiver core is so deep, so talented for the Ohio State Buckeyes. This is one of the most talented wide receiver wide receiver core, wide receiving core Urban Meyer has had in his tenure with the Buckeyes. So let's take a look at some of their stats real quick. KJ Hill 62 receptions, 772 yards, 5 touchdowns. Strongest stat-wise for K.J. Hill. Paris Campbell, 66 receptions, 711 yards, 9 touchdowns. He has been the most reliable receiver for the Buckeyes. He has been the guy the Buckeyes want to lean on. He's been the guy Dwayne Haskins is clearly favorite target. Didn't seem it last week against Maryland for the Buckeyes, but clearly rest of the season it has seemed that way. I don't, I don't expect anything to change. Michigan can lock him up the way Maryland did then they can win the football game. Wide receiver Terry McLaurin, 30 receptions, 579 yards, 9 touchdowns. Terry McLaurin, a guy that was leaned on so much against Maryland. And if the Wolverines can lock him up, can lock K.J. Hill up, can lock even one of those three guys up, that could cause problems for Ohio State. It clearly caused problems for the Buckeyes last week against the Terps. Buckeyes have allowed... 24.6 points per game. They have scored 41.6 points per game. So, last few weeks, the defense has not been stellar for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Clearly, they really need to get both off the ground. Their, their offense, it has been stellar all season long. They have been involved in some high-scoring games of recent if you want to talk about some high-scoring games for sure, you're going to want to talk about last week's Buckeye game against Maryland. Final score of 52-51. to 51. Maryland could not convert on the two-point conversion. But I feel like the way Ohio State needs to win this game is for their defense to step up. I think it's going to be an offensive shootout. Though... The Wolverines' defense is... They have been great. I'm going to give them credit for being a great defense. Consistent. All season long. They're going to give the Buckeyes some troubles. But I still think it's going to be an offensive shootout between two offensive powerhouses in college football. It's. I think it's going to come down to which defense can make the crucial stop in the fourth quarter. And when we look at the Wolverines' stats... You'll know why. Quarterback Shea Patterson, 2,177 passing yards, 18 touchdowns. Running back Karen Hidgen, 206 carries, 1,106 yards, 10 touchdowns. Shea Patterson, he's been a consistent quarterback throughout the season. He hasn't, he doesn't have the stellar numbers, but when you look at him on the field, when you look at the tape of Shea Patterson, he looks like a Tier 2, Tier 3 level college quarterback. I, I say Tier 3, but some people put him, want to put him in that high tier of Tier 2 quarterback. He has been very good for the Wolverines this season, starting with Wisconsin. They ba they were bouncing back after the Notre Dame Week 1 loss. A lot of people thought, oh, geez, it's going to be another bad season like that again. We're barely going to make a bowl game. And now the Wolverines, after losing against the to the Fighting Irish number three team in week one. They are now in the top four on the inside of the college football playoff currently. And when you look at running back Karen Hidgen, he's been a reliable running back for the Wolverines, over a 1,000 rushing yards, double digits and touchdowns. I feel like the Wolverines are going to have to go to that run game if they want to stay consistent. But Ohio State's run defense, they have been – pretty good the most of the season, but if you look at them last week, they got blown out of the water by Anthony McFarland, so I feel like if they can, the Wolverines can give the ball to Hitchin, it's going to give the Buckeyes defense a lot of problems on the running side of the football. The passing game for Maryland, they had a few big plays here and there, but Ohio State's pass defense are secondary. It's been so good, their pass rush has been pretty good 
these past few weeks, and it's been consistent throughout the entire season, whether you include Nick Bosa, who is withdrawn from school, whether you include some of those guys that are currently injured, they have a fantastic secondary, a fantastic pass rush. So I think that with these receivers and their stats, about I'm about to mention that the that the Wolverines are going to have to keep the ball on the ground if they want to stay in this game, if they want to consistently have the Buckeyes number on defense. Let's go to some of their some of the Wolverine receivers and their stats. Wide receiver Donovan Peoples Jones, 32 receptions, 477 yards, and seven touchdowns. He's been a reliable receiver for the Wolverines and Shea Patterson. Patterson's clearly his favorite target. He has good talent for the Wolverines, and I feel like Ohio State's going to have some trouble locking him up on defense. I feel like he is just such a good receiver. He can run run his routes so well that he is going to give the secondary for the Buckeyes quite a bit of trouble. Now, the now these other two receivers, I'm not too worried about for the Buckeyes' defense. I feel like Ohio State has had such a good pass game, pass defense as I just mentioned, so I feel like the secondary is going to lock up these two next two receivers, but Peoples-Jones, Ohio State fans, look out for him on Saturday. Zach Gentry, 30 receptions, 475 yards, and two touchdowns. Nico Collins, 29 receptions, 491 yards, four touchdowns. And when you look at the tape, you got to look at these. Ohio State has to look at these two guys. They, have, they can't just look at Donovan Peoples-Jones. They have to look at Gentry. They have to look at Collins. They have to look... At, the, at more than just one receiver. That is what Ohio State's offense is like. You have to have that deep wide receiver core. I feel like the Wolverines have somewhat of a deep wide receiver core this year. So I feel like that there's going to be a couple of receivers the Buckeyes just cannot cover. So they're going to have to lock up Gentry and Collins and consistently have a safety over top of Donovan Peoples-Jones and have a QB spy on Shea Patterson. They cannot blitz in the pass game or you're going to give the Wolverines a lot of options if you blitz on a pass. So the Buckeyes are going to need to keep a lot of coverage, a three or four man rush consistently when the Wolverines are passing the football. So that's what's going to need to happen. The Wolverines average 36.6 points per game on average, giving up 13.5 points a game. So their defense has been stellar the entire season. Chase Winovich leading the way with this. You can call a beautiful golden hair. I don't, I don't like it that much. I, f- I feel like football players, they don't need to have hair or a beard. I feel like that they if they have talent, they should be given the attention. I don't feel like I feel like a mustache. Gardner Minshew shouldn't make him one of the most beloved players in college football just because he has looks and talent. I feel like that they should focus mostly on the talent, and Minshew has a lot of talent. Don't get me wrong. Winovich has a lot of talent. I just feel like you do, you shouldn't look at the features, and you should look at the talent when you're considering some of the greatest players to talk about in the certain year of college football. And Winovich is a good player. I don't feel I feel like he is a tier two player when you talk about him that way. So let's take a look at some of the series notes in the Meyer versus Harbaugh era. Urban Meyer leads 3-0. In the last five, Ohio State leads 5-0. The last six, Ohio State has won. They're on a six-game win streak in the rivalry, the game. And Ohio State has won 13 of the last 14 against their arch nemesis, the Wolverines. In the series, the Wolverines lead 48 wins for the Wolverines, 39 wins for the Buckeyes, six ties. So now let's take a look at some of the some of the moments from the series and some of the moments that made this rivalry what it is. Let's take a look at the Wolverines. Desmond Howard Heisman pose after after a 91-yard punt return for a touchdown. Sealing a nice victory for the Wolverines over the Buckeyes by a score of 31-3. to That will be forever ingrained and engraved in Ohio State fans' minds. So, that that one of the big moments, one of the moments that made this rivalry what it is. So, Rich, and giving us those great moments. Jim Harbaugh smashing a Buckeye on Bo Schembechler's grave. 
before the 2015 game. Harbaugh's first game between the Wolverines and the Buckeyes as coach. They would go on to lose that game. And then the Wolverines this year are guaranteeing a victory over the Buckeyes. And we have seen cocky Wolverines. It doesn't pay off in the end for them. Now let's take a look at Ohio State's moments. The legendary head coach Woody Hayes calling the Wolverines that state up north. He would not, and this started because he would not buy gas in that state. He said, we are not getting any gas in that blank state. The tax money we'd be paying them on the gas would be going to them, and I'm not supporting them in any way possible. Woody Hayes, just pure hatred for them, and that is why the Buckeyes this week are calling them that team up north, crossing out every M in their path en route to this big game. So a lot of hatred and a lot of tempers will be flaring on Saturday. 26, 2006, the game of the century. One versus two, the Buckeyes would take it by a score of 42-39. to 39. They would go on to clinch a spot in the BCS National Championship game. In 2016, the two versus three matchup in double overtime, the Buckeyes took it by a score of 30 to 27. So a lot of rich moments, a lot of great players, a lot of talent in this game. This is going to be one of the greatest games of the college football season. I think it is going to be the greatest game of the college football season. In my prediction, the Ohio State Buckeyes come out on top 44 to 41 in overtime. And if you guys have been following my channel, you know I'm an Ohio State fan, so you know I'm picking that. I'm picking my guys, the Ohio State Buckeyes. And to every Wolverine fan, the reason I haven't said your name is because I'm calling you that state up north just like Woody Hayes. So, respect to you guys, but I have a, I have a little respect for the Wolverines and what they've done this season. But it's all going to come crashing down, in my opinion this Saturday. Thank you guys for watching this video. Like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. And as we get into the football season, as we get into December, more football prediction and breakdown videos will be coming soon. So once again, thank you guys for watching and until next time.